Hi there, my name is Roger. I'm a co-founder of WildCloud and the next few minutes are a snippet from the podcast that I recorded with Vikas Singhal, the CEO and co-founder or founder rather of InsideWP. In this podcast, we discussed everything from where he started, how he cut his teeth in WordPress, but most importantly, how the connection between InsideWP and WildCloud works. So in this demo, he shows you how you can use InsideWP as your WAS storefront. So you can actually build a site on InsideWP and then sell it automatically via InsideWP by making a connection to the WildCloud platform. So in one swoop, you can easily productize your websites, turn them into a website as a service and use InsideWP along with WildCloud to host and scale all of your sites while managing and improving your sites centrally over time. So without further ado, let's begin. So just to put a little bit of context of the, just this demo, that we have set up a WildCloud account. It's a, it's a basic account. It doesn't have anything, even though you see a lot of versions here. Just for now, consider that they are not there. And what you need in order to get started is just to go over and copy the API keys, right? Just click on plus, uh, name it, and then copy it. So, and then we will have a full step-by-step -step documentation published on our docs very soon. Um, next, what you need to do is come to InstaWP and then start building as, as we talked about, right? We just, just think, don't think about it, start building. And with the interest of time, I have built something uh, beforehand. So it's a, it's actually a segue into the, or uh, just wanted to refer what I talked about. It's it's a yoga studios um, website. How original, the, the How Indian original. guy is showing us a yoga site. Yep, and I don't think the people here are an Indian. So that's that's for change, right? So <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there are more yogis outside of India these days than inside of India. <laughs> Hundred percent, man. A uh, lot of people. Okay, when I, when I go outside India, they, they, you you must be knowing yoga. Yeah, hundred percent. Why not? Can I teach you? So <laughs> maybe cut out this bit from the podcast. But <laughs> well, yeah. well, I mean, fortunately, you're associated with yoga. All people want to do with me is smoke weed. So I mean, you know, <laughs> I think you've got the easier yeah. job there. I, I, I feel I feel okay now. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is a Yogesh website, which is built on Elementor, or it can be built with any stack which you want, right? So that's the beauty of it. And um, and then I'm going back to my InstaWP website. I'm not going to explore how what are the different features the website has. It depends upon your use case. The next step is you just click on Save as Template. So we are we are going to templatize this uh, website. So we can say Yoga website for uh, everyone and then provide a description click on share tab and click on save and i have done that obviously beforehand so if i go to the tab, templates tab uh, you will see that the yoga template uh, wildcloud wc is pre-built and ready to go so this is our step number two the step number three is you can monetize this by clicking on it so this is where the e-commerce the checkout part starts to come into play so just click on the toggle and then you monetize it. If you don't want to sell the template itself, you can keep it for free, but you have to monetize. That's the part of like step-by-step -step things. So you just keep it for free. Uh, don't mark it as paid. But if you think that you're actually the template itself brings value, so you can mark it as paid as well. So the next step is going to the hosting tab. And if you remember the wild cloud API credentials, which you copied a um, few minutes ago, just click on connect hosting, scroll down a bit, you will see the Wildcloud logo, click on it, and you will be able to like uh, enter the API key, secret key, and select a region. This is important, right? Because your application may reside in either one of them, not both of them. So be mindful of that. And then click on test and then connect. So once you have done that, which I've done already, you will see all the versions listed here, what you also see on Wildcloud. As again, Ignore that for now. The next step for that will be click on this three dotted icon, click on sync template. And now what we are going to do is, so when you do it for the first time, it will actually ask you for the list of templates and you select the template which you want to link. So this is where the InstaWP and Wildcloud linking or integration comes into play. So now we are linking the Insta template with the Wildcloud account which you have connected. 
Once you have done that, click on sync template. It will create a new version. <coughs> Excuse me. It will create a new version on WildCloud. So WildCloud, as we talked about, is, is a set of version-based controls, right? So every time you deploy a new version, it creates a new version on WildCloud, and that's an actual running uh, copy of your master site. And then when you create new copies from it, which, we, which they call tenant, uh, these tenants are created from that version. Now, to, in order to create these tenants uh, from the version, you, have, you need to mark a version as production. So click on the version and on the three dotted icons, uh, you will see a production. This is already marked as production. If I had to mark it another, mark another one, uh, go and click on set as production. So there you go. So once you have done the template syncing part, linking part, now you're ready to build a WAS. So I'm going to the WAS screen. Here you will see that I've already built a WAS, obviously. Uh, let me just click on add new and go through the process once again. So let's say this is the WC demo was and the monetized template, which we just created is now shown here. Click on next. There are a com couple of options here. You can just click on next, go to the next one, skip it. And here is where you create different plans for your customers. So let's say I create a free plan, keep it free. Choose the server alias, uh, which we just connected. And you can also add a bunch of features and descriptions. So let's say view servers. That is also a feature actually uh, because of the GDPR thing. And if you go to new plan, and then maybe this is a paid plan. And you can mark it as paid. And you can say $29 per month. And that's it. In this case, you are going to use our payment gateway, which is pre-integrated into your account. And now I'm going to choose the server alias as WildCloud again for both the plans. At this point, you can actually connect multiple WildCloud accounts if you want to. So one for US, one for EU, one with, one with higher uh, configurations, one with higher specs, one with a lower spec. It depends upon how you want to build it. So let's say paid plan all right so let's go to the next step here you can actually brand the whole thing the colors the logos i'm going to keep it as default for now click on finish excuse me and there you go so our boss is ready to go if i click on this this is actually a preview icon or preview link and it will you can share this link with your potential customers and they can go through a checkout flow, a very, very simple checkout flow. Uh, so let's try that. So let's click on free plan because we don't have to enter credit card. If we had to choose paid plan and click on continue, we will ask for a credit card. But for this demo, let's just choose the free one. And here I'm going to enter a name, so class, and maybe my email ID, go to continue. And this is a confirmation step where we show what is what are you that, what is that you're going to do and what are the plans any so it is actually calling the wild cloud apis and essentially like setting up the whole tenant thing so if i go back to my wild cloud console and go to yep so you can there see that go. there is a new tenant being created on version 6 which is our production version as you can see here and as we talked about, you can always manage. So I think that's, this is what multi-tenancy looks like. Means you have different versions, you have a bunch of tenant on one version, bunch of tenant another version, and you can keep managing your versions like that. Uh, however, the recommended way is to have a production version where you have the latest code running, and then you can keep shifting, or you can move your tenants between one version to another. Uh, Roger, is there a specific recommendation on when to move a tenant, like on a weekend, or they can be live also? It doesn't matter. So if your customers are using the sites that you've spun up for them and you move them from one version to the other, normally there's no downtime associated with that at all. So if you do it on a busy Wednesday, that's totally fine. Uh, the, awesome. only, the only process that we'd recommend is exactly what you just uh, uh, actually already mentioned, which is 
the best practice is to only have two versions at all times. So you've got your production version, which mm -hmm. is essentially the version that you don't use to test or update any changes. And then you've got your staging version, which is basically a clone of your production version. This is uh, where you update okay. your features. This is where you install new plugins. And then exactly as you say, when you're ready with the staging version, you basically turn it into the production version and move your tenants from the old version to the new version, deleting the old version when, any, when everything is right. If you mm -hmm. do find that there are problems, you can quickly roll back to the old version, fix the problem uh, before moving them back to the new version and repeating the cycle. Got it. So I, I think in order to like replicate that flow into Insta is you make changes to your site. So you don't actually have to maintain staging if you don't want to. However, I think it's recommended to you if you do. I think you can make all the changes on your Insta site, which is not yet deployed into Wild Cloud. Once you are ready, just go to your templates. So there, there are two sync procedures right now once you do your changes. So once you sync your template, the Insta template from the Insta site, and then you go to hosting, and then you sync the Insta template to the hosting account, right? This, this again. Uh, this we are going to automate in the next phase where you just need to sync once and it will just go and create a new version. And we do have that feature where if you want to move tenants, you can actually move tenants from another version to here. I think you do the same there. I think the idea is that you don't need to switch a lot between the control panels. You just manage from one and the other one takes care of the infrastructure. So that's the that's the goal or that's the idea, but you can always go back and forth if you want to have more deeper control. All right, so this is our WAS checkout page and voila, so we have the tenant website ready. Let's open it. We, I actually tried to open it before only, and it works really well. Uh, it has all the content which we had already deployed. It has a username and password. Uh, the magic login uh, link should work. It's not working, and there's a slight bit of snack there, but it should work, and it should enable you your users to actually magically log in into that. Uh, the other cool aspect of this is manage site, where the where your user can actually manage their own site. Uh, I think this is being deployed right now or something, but using managed site, they will be able to map their own domain, right? So that's the magic sauce, which at the end of, end of these transactions, people want to map their own custom domain and they can do it with our managed site option. Yeah, so, that's the beauty of the WAS, right? That it's completely self-service. You basically provide the... 80% of the work and all they have to do is customize. And exactly as you say, and, and I've seen it work with the managed uh, dashboard, you're basically giving people an environment to manage everything, set their own domains. And um, um, what I love about the WAS model is that we often, we often communicate the examples of companies that have adopted a completely product-based business model where you basically mm -hmm. sell pre-configured, pre-built, managed templates um, mm -hmm. and no longer do projects. But to be honest, in practicality, in reality, we often see that most of those companies um, um, adopt a product-based mo model complementary to the projects. So what you're doing mm -hmm. is you're selling sites for, say, in, let's, let's use your example, $30 per month, and it's basically a self-service product. And then when people actually need uh, extra help, extra services, they turn obviously to the vendor and you can basically upsell them more premium services. So it's almost mm -hmm. like you're like you're selling a lead magnet where the customers pay you instead of you paying for the lead magnets. And, it's, and it works wonders. Yeah, it does. And because the customer gets what they see in within minutes rather than a long sales cycle. And it's a win-win for both you and the customer. I think that's the best situation to be in.